Patrick Brent is a Marine's Marine. I could talk for an hour on this gentleman. He's one of the most generous guys I've ever met. He's helped youngsters in the Devil Pup program. He's got our community leaders to be embedded with the troops. I mean, the guy has done it all. Uh, big supporter of Notre Dame football. He works out with the team every year. Uh, his wife, Asato, puts up with him like puts up with me. Uh, lots of travel involved with this guy. And he has a beautiful daughter who is an excellent person that produces videos for him. Yeah. He's been to the club before. Today he's going to sell the books he's going to talk about. And 100% of the proceeds goes to this, this club. So when you give him $17 or whatever he's charging for the book, that money is going right into our coffers. So with that, Patrick, thank you for doing this, my friend. You got somebody operating everything over there? All right. Aloha. 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 Now, I promise, I promise some of you folks I take you on a time machine. Robin, do you know what a time machine is? Well, hang on. Get on this time machine here at the Waikiki Yacht Club, and we're going to shove off on a heading of North East North. That'd be right. That'd be right. Naval Academy guy. From north, east, north, and we hit the California coast. Then we're going to turn left, go past Monterey, and from that point we're going straight to um, Port Ord. Port Ord, oh god, here we go. Sounds like I'm being put up here. And my picture of a drill sergeant here has disappeared. But anyway, at Port Ord, they're still in the recovery mode. For a couple of years there, they had an Army drill sergeant named Dave Livingston, and uh, set the Army back a little. That's, those were the years the Navy always won the game, the big game. So anyway, David Livingston is my great friend who's helped me out. He's probably one of the most kind and generous people here. And fortunately, he's now on his 50th anniversary with Pamela. Probably the best looking woman, the most patient. 50 year anniversary ever. So, we're getting back on the time machine, Robin. You ready? You're holding on? Hold on. That's it. Wow. 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 Look at that guy. Almost hit puberty at that point. I wonder if when you were a recruit, you could call your DI a nerd. Dave, how old were you? I was. Uh, 19 to 21. Okay, now we're going to go from... Are you holding on to the time machine, Robert? Hold on. Okay. We're going to time machine. We're heading on a heading of uh, west, northwest, and we're going to the Hawkeye State. Does anybody know what the Hawkeye State is? Anyone? Iowa. Iowa? Is that what you said? Iowa. Okay, well, then we go to Winterset, Iowa, the birthplace of a gentleman named Marion Robert Morrison. 1907. This gentleman and his family, because of medical reasons, had to shove off for Arizona and California. He finally got Southern California, and Marion Robertson, which is his name to he's about 25, he could play football for USC. Turned down by Notre Dame and Navy, no doubt. But he played football, got injured, and then at first, they dropped him on a scholarship, which is not very, not good ethic. They dropped him, and so he had to get a job, and he worked as a laborer in the movie industry. Later on, meeting John Ford and other people, and it's, it's somewhere around he's 25, he was, his name was changed to John Wayne. And that's where he's born. The, uh, So what happened is, uh, now I want to give you the genesis of these three books. A long time ago, during the comic plague, and when I was fighting some medical challenges, I created these books. How did they start? 
Well, my nephew is a Marine officer. In fact, he just retired last week, uh, Steve. Uh, he came back from France and he said they're mispronouncing his famous general's name, General John Lejeune. So I got together with a very courageous, um, very courageous editor at Leatherneck Magazine named uh, Colonel Ford, Walt Ford, and we got together and produced an article that was the largest number of hits in the military and Marine Corps history. Because everybody wondered how to say it. So then, my good friend named Steve Pettit. Steve Pettit is a uh, obviously a Marine and he's a great uh, Blue Angel pilot. And he sent me a cartoon with John, this cartoon here with John Wayne saying it. Well, the hotel I was involved with had just been sued by some people running a scam on an internet photos. So I decided I better go legit on this. And I called Pilar Wayne and, the, and Michael Wayne and Patrick Wayne. I got a lawyer in Connecticut. Well, what I wanted. I thought I bombed. Six months later, I got a letter saying I had to write to John Wayne's image in magazines and things. And then another year later, he gave me another letter saying I had to go out with that. Well, how did I know John Wayne's? How did I know um, John Wayne's widow? 1998. I was in San Antonio, Texas. Great Mexican shop. I was there at a, a polo annual meeting of the governors, and a gentleman named Jesse Upchurch comes up to me, a small guy, uh, even smaller than me, and he had overweight, but he had a slender, attractive new wife. He just married the last week on a yacht he had. He had a company called Travel Ventures. He had a yacht with like 10 private rooms, and that's where he had the wedding. I wasn't invited. So then um, Jesse introduced his new wife, Pilar. The next night I'm having dinner with them. And I said, you know, Jesse, the only context I ever heard the word Pilar was John Wayne's widow. And Jesse's chest just swelled up. He was so proud. He said, right, Patrick. Tonight, Pilar is John Wayne's former wife. And she reached over and she rubbed my wrist a little bit. She said, I want you to know, Patrick, that John, that Jesse Upchurch is every bit as much a man as John Wayne and more. I said, well, good to know. That night I went out and looked at the Texas sky and I said, most disingenuous comment I ever heard. So then, that's the last time I heard, but they met, she was filming, a, she's a movie star down, and this is a great book I just got last week. Uh, John Wayne, My Life with the Duke, by, by Pilar. And this, she was a, a movie star in Peru. She was filming a very sexy movie where she did a dance with uh, very little on it. John Wayne saw her when he was down there scouting for a, for a movie site. And they became, they got married for 25 years and three great kids. Well, the, uh, so what happened is, uh, when my nephew came back from France, he said they were mispronouncing the name. So we did that campaign, and, um, and at the same time, I started writing these books. The, uh, and I was giving talks at marine bases all over the country. And people were wondering, people were wondering how I had, how I got this done. Well, I wrote an essay called "Me and Mrs. Duke." It's in the Alpha issue. "Me and Mrs. Duke." I just get, did it to give the Marines something at my at my meetings. But then it was during the COVID. I had some medical challenges. So what I did was I, I started writing more. I wrote "Me and Me and Keith Flipper," "Me and Father Timothy," "Me, me and uh, Mr. Dental Floss." And it, so before you knew it, I had a trilogy, just like The Hobbit, a trilogy. And these are available here and for donations to the club. But you know, they say, whenever you do a project like this, it takes a village. It takes a village. My editor, Joy Davis in North Carolina, backed up by her sister, Sheila, 911. And going down to South Carolina, near my daughter's house in South Carolina, is a guy named uh, Dan. Fowler is a great artist, and Dan created in these books, modeled after the Playboy Bunny that was out years ago. There's ten icons in my life on each cover, and anybody who get eight of those and buy a book gets a Marine Corps Marathon sweatshirt as an award. You know, if you read, if you read ten books a year in America, you're in the top one percentile. So you buy all three books, you're thirty percent there. Isn't that, kind of, isn't that kind of bad? Well, anyway, I put a lot of energy in these books and a lot of heart, and I hope you all enjoy it. Aloha. You? Oh, questions. We have questions. Sorry.
Did you have any questions? No, say. What was it like to be embedded with the troops in Afghanistan? I yeah, I made three trips over to Afghanistan, Iraq, and um, and Africa. And being with real Marines doing their thing was a was an honor. I wrote a couple hundred stories. Later on, I went on the USS Blue Ridge, and I spent a, a month or two with, a, with Commander Steve Cologne that and Steve introduced me to digital photos. First digital camera I ever saw. Anything else? <laughs> Uh, Patrick, tell us about your uh, experiences with uh, uh, President Reagan. Oh, that's, a, that's a, okay. I met Ronald Reagan in Elvin one time when I was on my way to a, a polo game in uh, Houston. And I, uh, I try to avoid sucking up to people. I didn't talk to him. The girl I was with when we got out of the car says he was no longer governor. Well, she asked me why. I said, well, He's a terrible governor, he'll, he'll never he'll never be president. He's running for the White House. And he's very, very friendly. So nothing happened. Years go by. The minute he came to the White House, he fired all his air traffic controllers. I said, oh my God, he's my kind of guy. So I uh, I felt I really messed up a chance. If I had been kinder to Ronald Reagan, maybe be Secretary of the Navy. <laughs> However, so then years go by and I'm in a game at Will Rogers Club with a guy named Mickey Britton. And Ronald Reagan came to all the games. And had a little Secret Service stuff like that. And I was on a beautiful horse, and he really had the horse. So he came up to my horse, and I immediately, I immediately said, "Good afternoon, Mr. President." We had a long chat, and every time he was there, I had more conversations with him. I, we gave him a mallet with the kipper on it. A really great American, and we could use a guy like Ronald Reagan back. And he, we needed a guy like Ronald Reagan back. Good question. I have a question. Robin. How did you meet your wife? Take it. How did you meet your well, wife? That's in the last book. You have to buy it to find out. <laughs> the last book. <laughs> it happened in a uh, building, and uh, it's a, kind of an outrageous story. Found a couple of gay guys. Not that that's bad. Nathan? I hear you're a Notre Dame fan, and Notre Dame's coach left for LSU, and that just isn't right. Thanks, God. You know, I, I never liked them. <laughs> you know, I, I had Notre Dame a lot. And everybody's lining up for autographs and things with them, pictures. And he asked, after about seven or eight years of hanging out with him, he said, well, how come PT's not lined in the... I said, just tell me I don't like him. He didn't have the spirit of Notre Dame. He just didn't have the bucks. The new coach is, is great. Let me ask, Sacco, have you ever seen Notre Dame lose a game? She said, never. I agree. And we're playing Navy in the first game of the season. We're playing Navy in Dublin in the last week of August. Anything else? Okay. Tell me about polo in Hawaii. Well, when I came to Hawaii in 19... When I first started doing business in Hawaii in the 1970s, I met Fred Daly and Michael Daly. And I... And I uh, got into horses. I never ridden a horse ever. So I got into the polo. They have two polo clubs here, one at Mokulegia um, and one at Waimanella. Called. One's a Honolulu polo club, one's a Hawaii polo club. If you haven't seen a game, it's a good idea to see it. It's probably the most dramatic, exciting, and dangerous sport in the world. And how often have you played polo? 30 years. Retired. We were out there with the uh, Wounded Warriors a month ago out in Mopalia, and uh, they did a great job uh, representing Polo and uh, Wounded Warriors had a good time. Glamour, style, danger, and speed. Actually, the Polo crowd's got a... It's not a I'd rather be in the Marine Corps crowd. <laughs> or the any military unit. Tell us how the Polo win got started. What? The Polo Inn. Well, the Polo Inn was named, um, Fred Daly started a couple of hotels, the Waikiki Inn. Several other Fred Daly's quite a, is it, there's a book out about him. Um, the Waikiki did a book, a hotel called the Polo Inn. It's now called the Hotel Equus. Because we had such bad reviews about 20 years ago, we changed the name. It's a good hotel now. What's, what is this number 29? I see number 29. That's yeah, in the last book. That secret revealed after many years, the last number. Um, 
Pamela tells everybody it's her age and my IQ. <laughs> uh, Captain Cologne. Tell us about uh, your, you, you spent time with uh, uh, Frank Sinatra. Tell us about the time uh, that you spent with him and how you got to know him. Well, Sinatra um, came up to the Desert Polo Club in Palm Springs. His wife is a wonderful lady named Barbara, and she had a big event every year, and he came at the very end. He had a giant glass, a big a glass full with of bourbon. What's that famous bourbon? Uh, Jack, Jack, Jack Daniels. He has a bottle of that in his... In his Jack uh, Daniels? He has a bottle of Jack Daniels and a cigarette lighter and a pack of, uh, uh, fill, I think, a pack, a pack of um, cigarettes in his... Uh, too, but he came out every year. He was always he was always hammered, and I didn't talk to him at all for ten years. And then after ten years, he he was in bad shape and he had to stop drinking. So he's there, and he's there with uh, other celebrities like Robert Wagner, Jill St. John, and uh, and and I'm walking by, and I hadn't talked to him in ten years, and I was I was actually in charge of the club. So his wife gets up and said, "Patrick, you've never met my husband. She wanted me to meet him." And he stood up and said, "Frank Sinatra." So we had a nice chat. How long, how long after that did he pass? Um, I don't think he recovered from meeting me. I think it was probably within hours. <laughs> <laughs> he, uh, he, uh, I don't know, his wife and he are both buried now. And on his tombstone, it says that the best is yet to come. Okay, that's it? Okay. I'll end this with Go Navy, Meet Army. Thank you, BT, and once again, the books are for sale, 15 each or 40 for three, and the money is going to the club, so please uh, take a look at the books, and we have some extra time, so why don't we take about 10 minutes for fellowship, and you can get your extra tickets, and then we'll do our drawing. How many books do you have?